Got another past exam question for the NMR topic. So this is number 23 in the playlist. Hope you find the video helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe and let me know what you think. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So we've got three um, isomers, D, E and F. We've got the molecular formula and we're told that one of them is allocyclic. So that means it's a ring, but it's not a benzene ring. And of course, it can't be a benzene ring anyway because we've only got five carbons. So the first piece of information we'll look at is the, uh, the results of these test tube reactions. So we've got reaction with 2,4-DNP, um, acidified dichromate six ions under reflux, and bromine water. So we'll deal with that column first. I'll just annotate this table so we can summarize what it's telling us. So D, no change with 2 for DNP, whereas E and F both gave the orange precipitate. So no change with 2 for DNP means that it can't have a carbonyl group in it, so it's not an aldehyde or it's not a ketone, whereas E and F does give the result, so these could be aldehydes or ketones from this information. So moving on to the results of this second test, the acidified dichromate six ions under reflux. Remember this is an oxidizing agent and it's orange in color. So it's gone green here. So there's been a change, there's been a reaction. So what sort of things can be oxidized? Well, it could be a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol. It can't be an aldehyde because even though they can be oxidized because we've ruled out aldehyde in the first test. So moving on to E and F, they've got the same um, result. So there's no colour change, so they haven't been oxidised. So like I've just said, you can oxidise an aldehyde. So it hasn't been oxidised, so these must both be ketones. And finally, the um, observation with bromine water. So that's the test for a carbon-carbon double bond. Well, there's been no change, so there's no CC double bond in D, E or F. So the next thing I want to do is get the structure for compound D sorted. So we've established it's not an aldehyde or a ketone. It could be a primary or secondary alcohol. It doesn't have a carbon-carbon double bond. And we've got this extra information. It's carbon-13 NMR spectrum showed three peaks at these shift values. Looking at the data sheet, we can see we've got two carbon-to-carbon -carbon environments and we've got a carbon to oxygen environment, which is consistent with the fact that it's an alcohol. So all we need to do now is make sure it fits the molecular formula, which was C5H10O. So I'm going to explain this by trial and error. So could this be a possible answer? Well, it's got five carbons, definitely. It's got three um, environments for the carbons, so one, two, three. They're carbon to carbon environments, and that's a carbon to oxygen environment. So could that be the answer? Well, the problem with this is it's got too many hydrogens. So this is actually C5H12O. So that means that that can't be the answer. So we need to drop the hydrogen count down to 10. We can't put a double bond in because um, of that information there. So we're going to have to make this a ring. And remember, one of them is allocyclic. So if we went for cyclopentanol, this has got the right molecular formula and it has got the right number of um, carbon environments. So we've got one there, carbon to oxygen, their equivalent and their equivalent. So moving on to compound E, remember we've established that it's a ketone. There's its proton NMR spectrum and it said in the information uh, that the integration data has been emitted. So we've got two hydrogen environments, that's it. Uh, so I'll do my usual thing and just look at each signal and build up a picture of the uh, molecule from that. Okay, so looking at this signal first, we've got um, a quartet at delta 2.4 ppm. That means there's an adjacent CH3 and the shift is H to C to C double bond O, which is consistent with the fact that it's a ketone. And the other signal is uh, a triplet. So therefore there's an adjacent CH2 with a shift of H to C to R. So the fact that we've got five carbons, but only 
two sets of hydrogen environments means we've got some symmetry in this structure. And the only way to make the structure work is to make it penton 3 ohm. So just quickly explain that. So you've got equivalent CH3 groups at each end. You've got equivalent CH2 groups here and here. So if we deal with the CH3 groups, so they're going to occur as a triplet because they're adjacent to CH2s. They're in the H to C to R environment. So that's that information there. And that's the signal. The equivalent CH2 groups are adjacent to a CH3. So they're going to come out as a quartet and they're in the H to C, the C to Ubuntu environment. So that's that signal there. And finally, moving on to F, so we've already established this was a ketone as well, and we've got a slightly more complicated looking uh, proton NMR spectrum. We've got three signals, that one's been expanded, so we've seen a bit more detail. Three signals, so we've got three proton environments. So I'll just do the same as before and just work out or work, write down what does this tell us and then we'll come up with the structure from that. So I'll just run through the information for each peak. So starting with this one here at roughly 2.6 ppm, that's a heptet, it's got seven lines in the signal. So that means there's six adjacent hydrogens that are equivalent to each other. So the structural feature there is two equivalent methyl groups, so CH3 twice group. And the shift is H to C to C double bond door, which again is consistent with it being a ketone. Now, the fact that we've got a splitting pattern means we've got to have at least one other splitting pattern because they work in pairs. So this, um, the protons causing this signal are going to be adjacent to these. So if I move on to this signal now, this one, so that's at 1.1 ppm. It's a doublet, so there's an adjacent CH and a shift of H to C to R. So that's what that part of the ketone is going to look like. So I've tried to colour code it to make it a bit easier to see. So the heptet, this pink, I've underlined it in pink, is this proton here. So it's in the H to C to C to Bondo environment, but it's adjacent to these two CH3 groups. And that's why it's split into this heptet. And the sort of lime green signal, hydrogens, um, so these are in the H to C to I environment and they're adjacent to a CH, so the scene is a doublet. Now, to be honest, we can get the structure out now, but I'm still going to go through this just for revision purposes. So delta 2.2 ppm, it's a singlet, so that means there's no adjacent hydrogens, and uh, the shift means it's in the environment of H to C to C double bondo, so it must be on this side of the C double bondo. Um, if we'd had the area information, it would have been really easy well, basically, if you think about how many carbons we've got left and how many hydrogens we've got left, it's going to be a CH3 group. So that is the answer.